Well, we're on the search for perch today. We're back in eastern South Dakota. And this particular lake, I think I fished this last time, maybe seven years ago. But it's really cool because these lakes cycle. You know, a lake will turn on and word gets out, fishing goes downhill, you know, and all the people show up. And then the next next year it's a different lake. And so you know, these lakes will, you know, they'll turn on and turn off. This particular lake here, it's only maybe seven, eight feet across the basin. And realistically, these fish could be anywhere. So I'm guessing we're just gonna have to go drill a lot of holes and just try to track them down. The wind's gonna really come up this afternoon, so hopefully we can try to find some fish before that wind comes up too bad. Or if we have to settle down in a house, we can do that. But uh, it's gonna be a lot of hole drilling, I got a feeling, unless we get incredibly lucky. We're just drilling lines of holes. You know, a lot of times I like to space the holes out and just drill big grids, trying to find them. You know, big moves, spread your stuff out. When you're looking for fish, once you find fish and your holes get closer and closer together, but. but I wish it made more sense than that. A lot of times there's no rhyme or reason to this. I always thought you could throw a dart Wherever, the, wherever it lands, that could be where they're at. They can be anywhere, you know, just as, if you can imagine these lakes, I mean, they're just perfectly flat, just basin. These fish are just running that soft bottom, eating bugs, eating freshwater shrimp. There's some weed clumps out here, but uh, you gotta drill a lot of holes, at least to start, at least to get on them. Then once you find them, then you can hunker down, hopefully. Oh, there's a fish showing up. There he is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there's a nice perch. Look at that. Ooh, first perch of the morning. I think it's the third hole I've dropped into. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> that is why we're here in South Dakota. Look at that, that's just a beautiful, Beautiful fish. And yeah, we're just kind of bouncing around in here. And if we don't get into a good flow of fish here, we'll just keep bouncing down 100 yards or so and see what happens here. And it'd be nice if we could just find a zone where we can settle down, but we'll see. We'll know by the end of the day. All these lakes have a different personality. It's kind of interesting. You can see here this water is kind of stained and so stained and shallow. Some lakes are fairly clear. I find as a rule of thumb, not always the case, but usually if it's really clear water, you can lift way up higher off the bottom, use a lot more flutter spoons, stuff like that, fish high. And when the water's really dirty, I find that I'm usually, you know, fishing closer to the bottom, using a lot more rattle spoons. Small tongues and jigs, small profiles have been the tickets, so we'll just fish here and see what happens. Got some tugging going on there. Oh yeah. That's a good one. That's what we're looking for. Oh. Boy, they, even the shallow water, they uh, pull nice. Got some good tugging going on. If I can get his mouth opened up, I can... Nice perch. All right, we'll go back to catch him again another time. 
You know, I'd say a big percentage of the of the perch fishing that we do in these prairie dish bowl lakes is over the basin. And if you were to you know look at these lakes without any water in them, these basins are just flat. I mean, some of the flattest terrain you'll ever see. There's not a lot of structure. You know, once you get off the shorelines and get out in that lake basin, it's just flat and it's soft bottom. And you know, these fish are running out in these basins. You know, soft bottom. You've got the invertebrates. You've got the bug hatches. You've also got a lot of freshwater shrimp in these lakes. And sometimes I think these fish just like these basins because they're safe out here. They're harder to catch. You know, you've just got, they can see all around them. You know, they don't get ambushed. If you're going to catch a perch and you're a predator out in this type of situation, you're going to have to chase it down. And so it almost seems like, you know, these, these basins are, I mean, it's just a spot for these fish to roam where they're, they can evade predators. And obviously you've got the forage factor as well. Come on, eat. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah. Love that. I hope it's a perch. Oh yeah, look at there. Yeah, that's a jumbo. Gorgeous. Nice. That's acting like a like a perch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. There we go. That's what we're after. <clears throat> so definitely getting some nice perch out here. I drilled a hole right there. There's uh, three and a half feet at the tops of the weeds, and then right over here, seven seven nine. It's uh, the fish are just roaming right up next to them weeds and uh, it's eating the freshwater shrimp that are in here. So. Look what I got, nice perch. You know, this lake that we're fishing on today, it's not a very deep lake, seven, eight feet, but um, we've been drilling a lot of holes. You know, that's been kind of important, drilling lots of holes, finding weed pockets. That's what we see, you know, you find a weed and then you just drill off to the side of it once you're on a clump of weeds. And it seems like them fish are, you know, swimming through the weeds, hanging out in the weeds, eating the freshwater shrimp in this lake. So mobility is the key when, when you're out here fishing. If you get on a pot of fish, you know, you, know, you stay, you're catching you know, as many fish as you can, they move on. So then it's drilling more holes. And when I get to an area like what we're doing right now, you know, I'll probably drill 10 or 15 holes because it's shallow and then just stay on them. So it's all about the mobility, moving around and trying to stay on that school of fish. Got him. Yeah. Look at that. Just look at the girth. Look how fat these fish are. And it's just typical prairie lake perch fishing in the sense that, yeah, look at that. Big old, just a big old body. Look at that tiny little head. Open up the mouth. Just look how small that mouth is. I mean, that's just, that's just typical out here. And so sometimes it could be a finesse bite where these fish are eating. A lot of times it's a lot of freshwater shrimp. And look at how well fed they are. Sometimes these fish just don't want to chase chase anything. And so a little bit of finesse here, just a small tungsten jig. We've got some spikes on there and been jigging it. And when these fish come in, it's almost like they want a dead stick. They're not overly aggressive. But as long as you can catch them, who cares? Who cares how they bite? This forage base in these lakes, it's a, it's a double-edged sword grows fish fast, but it can make them temperamental. Well, we've caught a few fish, but sitting over some of these holes where we caught a few and not marked any more fish, we're just gonna keep drilling a few holes here. This fish seems scattered, you know, if we don't get something going here, we might just have to hop in the machine and Go up a couple hundred yards here and just drill another grid of holes.
There he is. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah, there's a jumbo. Nice. Just love the build on these fish, it's the girth. They're just pot bellies. a good one. Nice. You know, we're fishing, fishing some shallow water, and um, when I come to a spot like this, I like to drill eight, ten holes, spread it out throughout the area, and then I um, go work these holes, you know, three to five minutes. If I don't see a fish, I try to move uh, in about five minutes for sure. You know, drilling them holes is kind of important when there's shallow water early. You can uh, move around and then if some of them fish, if you do spook some of them fish out of the way, um, you got them holes and hopefully you can walk to the next hole and then fish maybe moved over to that next hole. Oh, here comes one. There he is. This is a good one too. Take my gloves off here. Look at that. Jumbos. That fish just thumped it. Some of the bites are pretty tough to distinguish or just, I always joke, if you even imagine a bite, set the hook, but that fish, that ate it like it's supposed to. And we've kept enough for a meal, so we're just gonna give that fish its freedom. I'm gonna show you something here, and I think this is kind of important. Using a 32 inch dead meat rod, you see here this is a glass rod, the tip is sanded down with a really a soft tip, which is important because a lot of times, I mean that bite is just a barely a, if you even imagine a bite, set the hook. But you got that fast backbone, see how heavy that is right in here? For setting the hook and controlling those bigger fish. Now I'm using braided line. I think braid's a big advantage for these perch. I like to use braid, especially, you know, you get it like out on Wabe and Bitter, you might be over deeper water, Devil's Lake, you might be over deeper water. But even when I'm up shallower, that no stretch in that braid just makes that tip a lot more sensitive. Now, below the braid, I'm tying a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, just because there's a lot of walleyes and pike in some of this water. But on that heavier fluorocarbon, especially with these small jigs, I think it's really important to tie a loop knot. That way you get really good action on that jig, and that jig's always gonna kind of float horizontal in the water. And so the whole system works together you know, especially like right now, today, it's cold. I mean, it's probably the warmest day we've had in a couple of weeks, but it's still probably 10 degrees without wind chill. And the thing about this is that every line's gonna get ice on it, but when you get a little bit of ice built up on this frost braid, you can just clean that, that ice off the line so easy. And it's a lot more durable, and it just works really well when you're fishing outside. You know, what I find so fascinating about perch fishing is that every lake, every ecosystem will have its own personality. You know, every lake fish is a little different. And, you know, we're finding out here, you know, we've got this seven, eight foot basin, and these fish are just spread out. They're traveling in packs, maybe two to five fish at the most, and they're just scattered. And you're just, you know, checking holes, dropping down different holes, and they're just picking away and they add up. You know, you go to other places, you can drill 10 holes, you know, fish every hole, not mark a fish. 11th hole, there's five feet of fish and wrap off 20 fish in a row. And they're just stacked on top of one another. And what I find is that it's all about finding, you go from a zero to a hero. Out here on this particular body of water, it doesn't seem like that's the case where you just keep checking fresh water, checking holes, and you're just one here, one there, maybe catch three or four out of a spot. And so every lake fishes or sets up a little bit differently. And I think that's just fascinating. Oh, there's one. Boy, it's been tough out here. These fish have been really negative 
that wind is picking up. It's getting really cold out here. And we've just been bouncing around and uh, drilling new holes and trying to find some fish. Um, you get a few that will show up and this one actually showed up and bit where a lot of them have just been coming up and looking and uh, going on by. I just call them drive-bys when they don't uh, chew right away and eat. So, But I caught one and that's back to swim away again. So. It's been fun, you know, it's been a really good trip out here. South Dakota is an awesome place to come fishing and, um, you know, it's been a lot of years since I have been out here, but uh, I definitely need to add it to the list and come back because we caught some really nice fish today. The perch are phenomenal out here. Through the Dakotas, both North and South Dakota, last summer, I mean, it was just dry. We were in a severe, severe drought. We actually got some moisture through the fall. We've had a little bit of snow here this winter, but you know, a lot of these lakes, the water levels are low. And sometimes when the water drops, it actually makes the fishing better. But then when the water increases, you get that high water, you know, a lot of times that's when you get your big year classes and your big growth rates. And so there's just kind of an ebb and flow where sometimes there's situations that are great for the fish, but maybe not so great for the angler. High populations of forage, for example, you know, huge numbers of freshwater shrimp where the fish can be really tricky to catch. That water drops, that forage gets cropped down, that fish population increases, and you know, and all of a sudden those those same fish in that same lake get a lot easier to catch. And so, you know, just definitely see these cycles. But uh, it's a fascinating part of the world because every year it changes so much. A lake that you might have great memories from, say, two or three years ago, might be obsolete right now. And a lake that you maybe didn't have the best luck on five years ago is the lake today. And so, you definitely have to learn and relearn every year in this part of the world. It's kind of bouncing around. I tell you what, especially with a couple of people, you know, you almost work as a team. But if you can hack fishing outside, I think it's a big advantage for this type of situation. And so the biggest thing is, you know, dress for success. You know, I've got ice armor on, I've got layers on. And so even though it's with wind, it's probably right around zero degrees. I'm pretty comfortable, you know, learn to fish with gloves on. And another thing I've been doing, see here on my transducer, I've got this ice defense. Where you see how it's shooting water out? That keeps your hole open when you're fishing outside, especially when it gets, you know, cold out. This makes a big difference as far as having ice on your line, ice in your hole. Nothing will beat fishing outside if you can do it. There's a big mark. Come on, eat it, eat it. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh yeah, that is a good one. Wow, look at that. When they fight that hard, come here. Look at that. That's why we came here. Oh, look at that. What'd you get? Look at this. Oh, wow. that is a perch. Holy oh, smokes. Oh, 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 oh. That's the football they that's, talk about. That's huh? what we're looking for. Look at that. Oh man. That is a beautiful fish. Look at that. Golly, that just makes a person's whole trip. All the holes drilled, yeah. all the work. Definitely. That's what uh, it's all about. Well worth it. And man, that's a nice fish. Yeah, that is a perch. That baby looks like here. 13 and, 13 and a half. 13 and a half, 13 and yeah. three quarters. But look at how thick that thing is. Yeah, it's just oh, yeah look at that. It's a giant. Across the back. Toad. <laughs> Settle down, girl. Yeah. Ah, look at that. There she goes. You get so fat, you hardly wonder how they can even swim. <laughs> That fires a person up. Pretty cool when I get the phone call from Jason to, you know, hey, you want to go fishing? You want to go film a show? I mean, I've done a number of shows with him. We've done some panfish shows. We've done out to Winnipeg, which is an awesome trip. Hopefully we get to do that again. You know, I've known Jason for over 20 years, so it's, you know, we got a really good relationship. Both like to fish a lot, and that's what I like to do. I like to travel, adventure, and um, take trips. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, fish with Jason whenever I can.